Welcome to all our viewers and welcome to a new edition of Africa Today, our show bringing you all the latest news and events from all around the African continent. My name is Andrew Mayer and as usual, I'll be joining you for Tuesday's episode and we begin straight away with a look at some of the news making the headlines, starting with the Foreign Minister Sema Shukri and the visiting Moldovan Foreign Minister Nico Popescu, who held a press conference following their talks in Cairo on Tuesday. Speaking at the press conference, Shokri said the talks discussed boosting trade and economic ties. He said three memorandums of understanding were also signed between Moldova and Egypt on Tuesday. For his part, the Moldovan foreign minister said his country was looking forward to signing more deals with Egypt, especially in the field of energy. He said both sides exchanged views on the repercussions of the Russia-Ukraine war and said they also discussed activating trade exchange and facilitating the entrance of citizens between the two countries. <clears throat> And for more news, the Algerian and French Prime Ministers hailed a new dynamic as they launched a joint economic forum during a visit to Algeria by the French Prime Minister Elisabeth Bourne. More details in this report. France's Prime Minister Elisabeth Bourne was in Algiers on Monday for the launch of a joint economic forum with Algeria's Prime Minister Aymin Ben Abdurrahman. Speaking at the launch, they both hailed a new dynamic in their relations. Bourne's two-day trip to Algeria, a major gas exporter, comes just weeks after President Emmanuel Macron concluded his own three-day visit in August, following months of tensions. In remarks during the forum's inauguration, Ben Abdurrahman called for a sustainable dynamic in trade with France, based on reciprocity and mutual interests. Bourne called for a new dynamic of economic cooperation. Before returning to Paris, she also met with President Abdelmajid Taboun. She said bilateral ties will continue with regular visits and exchanges on the economic, political and technical levels. Bourne and her cohort are the latest in a string of top European officials to visit Algeria, Africa's top natural gas exporter, as officials seek alternatives to Russian energy supplies since the start of the war in Ukraine. The European Union's Energy Commissioner, Kadri Simpson, also traveled to Algeria on Monday. But ahead of her trip, Bong's office said deliveries of natural gas to France were not on the table. تسلمت الرئاسة الدورية للاتحاد الافريقي لعام 2019 وتتطلع كعادتها دوما للتعبير عن شواغل الشعوب الافريقية الشقيقة الرامية لتحقيق الاستقرار والتقدم ودفع عدلة التنمية قدما. إذا كنتم ترغبون في تغيير وجه القارة الافريقية فالاتحاد الافريقي كقيادة تستطيع أن تعمل وتبذ بشكل مركزي لمشروع عملاق لبناء بنية أساسية على مستوى القارة أنا أتصور أن الأمن والاستقرار استثمار إذا لم تستقر هذه القارة والأمن فيها بمعدلة عالية هذا الأمر سينعكس بالسلب علينا كلنا Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're now delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest for this afternoon, Mr. Abdul Latif Wahba, the journalist. It's a very good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Abdul Latif. And let's start by today. Uh, we saw the visiting Moldovan foreign minister in a press conference with the foreign minister, uh, Samah Shukri. And this leads me to asking you about how do you see the ties between uh, European and African countries, especially in the post-pandemic era, as well as in the midst of the Russian-Ukrainian situation? Uh, let's just say first that uh, um, uh, during... <coughs> Uh, uh, 
a great attention to the, uh, the African countries, especially after uh, the conflict, uh, uh, the war erupted uh, and Ukraine, and they are suffering from uh, 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 shortage of uh, 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 natural resources uh, from uh, energy, uh, supply of gas, and oils, and so on. Um, although uh, the uh, European countries has uh, a historic relationship with the African countries, African uh, continents, uh, and so on, mm -hmm. uh, but I think um, they captured uh, the time just now uh, to strengthen uh, relations with the African countries. Uh, this, of course, uh, uh, is uh, a mutual relation between the two uh, parties, uh, and um, uh, they can secure uh, their, uh, their needs <coughs> from uh, oil and gas, and so, from oil and gas, uh, and so on. Uh, this is on one hand. On the other hand, as you know, that uh, during the, uh, the last month, uh, uh, in the, uh, there was a critical conflict between uh, Algeria, for example, uh, and France, uh, and uh, they, uh, 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 they criticized uh, yeah, I mean, uh, all parties uh, criticized uh, their uh, on. Uh, but up next, uh, they, uh, uh, they uh, managed uh, to uh, redeem their state to, uh, to fix it uh, again uh, uh, after this uh, conflict. In the beginning of that time, you know that uh, I mean, in the current months of uh, uh, the last month, uh, the uh, France, for example, they that came to for uh, for uh, its relations with uh, some of uh, uh, like Algeria, Algeria, I mean, um, in the uh, 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 Algeria, uh, the main producers of oil and and gas in African uh, uh, continent, and as the and as the, uh, as the European uh, I am interested in that now uh, to extend another pipeline from uh, Nigeria to uh, Mali, uh, and Morocco to Spain. Uh, I think uh, um, the current task is that uh, the European countries uh, has to be. Uh, some, <laughs> sorry, some attention to <coughs> just now. Uh, uh, I wanted to say at the same time, if you remember the President of the Sisi during, uh, during his uh, uh, meeting with the cabinet and also uh, some events in, uh, in, uh, in uh, last two months, uh, uh, to discuss uh, the, uh, the the climate uh, uh, change and uh, uh, how can uh, the um, European uh, countries uh, uh, help the African countries uh, to also uh, to curb uh, the emissions and so on. President mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh declared that uh, the African uh, countries mustn't pay uh, the, the, the bill mm. uh, of the climate change, uh, of the climate uh, yes. change, uh, two times. Mm. Uh, one in the uh, past decades when uh, the European countries uh, took uh, their uh, natural resources and their needs for, from natural resources uh, from the African countries. And now, when the African countries uh, 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 try to exploit uh, uh, their natural resources, uh, they uh, face some problems uh, with, the, with the European countries mm. uh, as they want uh, yes. to, uh, to contain in their 
uh, monopolies of uh, the African uh, sources. Mm -hmm. Indeed. <coughs> and you've raised a very important issue, Mr. Abdel Latif, which is the uh, you know, relationship between uh, European and African uh, uh, countries, especially with regards to economic partnerships. Uh, how do you see European-African cooperation uh, in the coming period, especially, as you mentioned, with uh, lots of global situations that are putting European countries in a tight spot? Uh, as you know, the, uh, uh, the last, um, uh, the last um, uh, event happened uh, in Europe uh, proved that uh, the African, uh, the, sorry, the European countries uh, has um, or have to uh, to deal with the uh, with the African countries uh, in. Um, uh, 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 inequality mm. uh, and uh, mutual respect mm -hmm. uh, for their nations, for their administrations, for their uh, leaders, and so on. Uh, this is uh, uh, the most important uh, element uh, just now that can be extracted uh, from uh, the uh, from uh, the conflict uh, happened in Europe uh, just now. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, uh, I think that the European countries have to pay uh, for uh, the bill, for, um, uh, for the development of the African continent, for uh, the development of the African uh, countries at the same time. Mm. Uh, as you know, that uh, uh, if, uh, if they donated and awarded mm some funds for uh, the African countries, uh, especially uh, to uh, main infrastructures mm -hmm. and to education, the health uh, and the public utilities and so on. This uh, means that you improved uh, the, uh, the, the uh, and the, uh, you changed the climate of these countries and uh, to create jobs for youth is and so on uh, so you can uh, first of all overcome uh, the uh, the uh, uh, illegal migration uh, from the African countries mm. uh, to uh, European uh, countries uh, this is uh, on one hand on the other hand as you know that uh, uh, Egypt uh, <coughs> through President City adapted adopted a new policy for the integration of the African uh, continent, mm -hmm. especially uh, in some uh, vital sources, mm -hmm. in some vital uh, sectors, uh, especially in transportation, uh, in um, uh, exchange of trade between the, uh, the African uh, countries. Mm -hmm. As you know that uh, although we are um, uh, 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 yeah, a huge part of the, of, uh, of the world, yes. I mean the African continent, uh, but uh, the exchange or, or the, uh, the interest trade uh, between uh, the African countries mm. is it's so less. Yes. Uh, uh, so it must be uh, increased during the coming years, uh, of course, to, uh, to face uh, also, uh, the um, the other uh, uh, the other uh, treaties uh, that in Europe, for example, in Latin America and so on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Uh, one final question, if I may, please, Mr. Abdel Latif. How do you see the private sector being a part of such a relationship between Europe uh, and Africa? Uh, yeah, uh, you mean the private sector? Yes. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, this is, I think, the, the main link mm. uh, between uh, the African countries and the, the European countries, uh, especially the European uh, Union, for example, uh, preferred to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to give uh, donations and the fund uh, for uh, the private sectors to, uh, uh, to develop uh, their projects in uh, their countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if we let me say that, uh, for example, uh, Egypt uh, during uh, 
uh, it's a, a preparation yes. for the national determined contributions uh, that will be uh, discussed in uh, COP27. Mm. Uh, there is a, a, a segment or an, a, a main element uh, for the ne negotiations uh, uh, with the uh, European countries uh, to, uh, to support the uh, private sector in African countries. Right, absolutely. I'd like to thank you very, very much, Mr. Abdel Latif Wahba, our guest for this afternoon, the journalist. Thank you very, very much, sir, for your time and your insight and for joining us on today's edition of Africa Today. And still with uh, more news coming away from the African continent, Ethiopia's Tigray forces accused Eritreans of widening their war offensive against them. They called on Tigray's population to further intensify their campaign of self-defense. More details in this story. Ethiopia's Tigray rebels said Eritrea has extended its offensive into their region as diplomats scrambled to convene peace talks to resolve the almost two-year-long conflict. In a statement on Monday, the Tigray forces said that Eritrea's military has launched an extensive offensive in the direction of Rama, Zalambesa and Serona, towns in northeastern Tigray. They called on Tigray's population to further intensify their campaign of self-defense. Communications to the areas affected by the fighting are down. Hostilities between the Tigray forces and Ethiopia's federal government renewed in late August, breaking a fragile truce in place since March. Ethiopian officials have not yet commented on the latest fighting. But Ethiopian President Saleh Work Zode told lawmakers on Monday that the government is committed to ending the war and negotiating without any preconditions. And for our final story of the day, Chad said a government of national union will be created soon, allowing for holding new elections in the country. The details follow. Chad's ruler, Mohamed Idris Debi Itno, on Monday said a government of national union would be created in the coming days to steer the course toward new elections following a forum on the country's future. Debi said the government will put its heart and soul into ensuring that the will of the Chadian people is fully upheld. He was speaking at ceremonies where he was appointed transitional president after the forum, which ended on Saturday. Chad, one of the world's poorest countries, has endured repeated uprisings and unrest since gaining independence from France in 1960. Debbie, a 38-year-old five-star general, took the helm in April 2021 after his father, Idris Debi Itnu, who had ruled with an iron fist for three decades, was killed during an operation against rebels. Parliament was dissolved and the constitution suspended as Devi was proclaimed president. He headed a junta of 15 generals whose declared plan was to hand over power after 18 months, a period that without extension would have ended this month. Debbie then organized a national inclusive dialogue that he said would chart the country's return to civilian rule. It wound up on Saturday after endorsing a further two-year period, leading to elections during which Debbie would become transitional president and be allowed to stand as a candidate in the future polls. And with this final news item, we come to the end of today's edition of Africa Today. We're in the company of myself, Angie Meher. Many thanks for watching.